Hi, and welcome to episode 21 of Understanding Dark Table. This week we're going to look at the Shadows and Highlights module. It's a very powerful little module, so let's get right on into it. Okay, so the controls that we've got are Shadows, Highlights, White Point Adjustment, a Soften with Control, Radius Compress, Shadows Color Adjustment, and Highlights Color Adjustment. The values you can see here are the defaults. The Shadows slider allows us to darken or lighten the darkest tones within the image. Uh, as we drag the slider to the left, we make the shadows darker. As we drag the slider to the right, we make the shadows lighter. Now, one thing I have noticed with the shadows control is that when you get extreme and you drag it right down towards the left, the color channels seem to get unaligned, de-aligned, misaligned, <laughs> whatever the negative is for aligned. If we turn off these color channels, we can see that what appeared to be a light blue here is actually the green channel. Uh, and it extends further down than the white part of the histogram, which represents where all three channels exist. So as we bring that up, you can see that green channel comes back into registration with the rest of the channel information. So for that reason alone, I tend not to use this shadows control to set a black point. For me personally, I would prefer to use the tone control because when you adjust the tone control and simply drag this in to where you see the histogram falling off here, it brings all three channels down equally. And so your black point ends up being a real black point where all three color channels are aligned. But we're getting off the topic. So let's undo tone curve, go back to the shadows and highlights module. So that is the shadows control. The highlights control does exactly the same thing, but for the brightest areas of your image. As you drag to the right, you make the brightest parts of the image brighter. And as you drag to the left, you make the brightest parts darker. And as you can see, you can get some pretty horrendous effects if you go too far with it. I just want to jump over to another image that I know has some clipped highlights. So if I jump back to just the base curve, we can see that that's clipped. And if we turn on the shadows and highlights module for this image, using the white point adjustment slider and using my mouse wheel only rather than clicking and dragging, which tends to be a little bit coarse in its adjustment. If I use my mouse wheel, I can, you know, move in 0.2 increments and I can see my histogram slowly starting to move to the left. So now I'm way below where my white point needs to be. But now I can just roll my mouse wheel back up until I see that I'm hitting the white point right at the right hand extreme of the histogram. And I've got my white point exactly where I want it. I have in the past tried to use the tone curve module to set the white point as well. But it tends to be a much more rough and ready way of approaching it. This is far more accurate. Next up, we've got the soften with option. Now, you saw earlier that if you get really extreme and you drag your highlights down really aggressively like this, you get this very over-exaggerated contrast thing happening between dark and light areas within an image. The Gaussian blur will tend to exacerbate that problem. By switching to bilateral blur, that effect is much reduced. I mean, it's still pretty extreme because I've gone for absolutely stupid highlights values here, but I just wanted to demonstrate how the two blur options will differ in the way it processes your image. Now, related to the blur is the radius control, which allows us to control how widespread that blur is. So if we go for those really extreme settings again and we control the blur, we can get that really nasty HDR look if that's the look you're going for. 
hopefully you're not. Now next up we've got the compress slider and what this does is control how much of the tonal range of the entire image is controlled by the highlights slider and the shadows slider. If we were to set that compress value at 0%, then the highlights slider will affect all tonal values from that 50% mark of the histogram and everything to the right. So all of the lightest pixels that make up 50% of the image. And the shadows slider would then have an impact on all of the pixels from the extreme left of the histogram all the way up to that midpoint or that mid-tone of the image. If we bring the compressed slider up to say 50%, I'm guessing, but the, again the manual doesn't say this explicitly, but I'm guessing that what happens is the shadows slider will control the first quarter of the histogram and the highlights slider will control that right hand quarter of the histogram. And then when we bring that compressed slider all the way up to 100%, there is only a very slim sliver of bright values in the image which are affected by the highlight slider. And likewise, on the left hand edge of the histogram, there is just this narrow band of dark tones which are affected by the shadow slider as well. So you could almost think of this compress slider as behaving similar to an S-curve in the tone curve module. The steeper you make the S-curve in the tone curve module, that would be like bringing this compress value up into higher values. And the more shallow you made an S-curve in the tone curve module, that would be like setting lower compression values. The final two, the shadows color adjustment and the highlights color adjustment. Now you'll see that by default, shadows color adjustment is set to 100% and highlights color adjustment defaults to 50%. Basically at 50%, no change to the saturation of a pixel is made when you adjust the highlights or the shadows sliders. So by default, the highlights color adjustment is set to 50%, which means that as you adjust the highlight slider to affect the brightest part of your pixels, no change in saturation will occur. But the shadows color adjustment defaults to 100%, which means that as you adjust the shadows values, you will be increasing saturation in the darkest tones of the image. I'm just going to jump back to that other image that we were looking at at the start of the video and demonstrate this. So shadows color adjustment set to 100% means that as we adjust the shadows, we will see increased saturation in the darkest parts of the image. So if you watch these red flowers down here in the shadows at the bottom right hand corner, as I drag this shadow slider down, we can see that these pixels have become quite saturated. And if I was to back off this shadows color adjustment, we can see that desaturation occurring in those darker pixels or the saturation being undone if you like. And if we wanted to be really silly to demonstrate the highlights color adjustment, if I drag the highlights right the way down to create this really nasty effect in the sky, we can see that at a 50% setting, no saturation adjustment has occurred to the, the bright pixels. As I drag this towards zero, this becomes monochrome, and as I drag this to 100%, we can see the saturation being applied to the sky. But uh, obviously, use it tastefully. And that is the Shadows and Highlights module. I'm going to leave it right there. Have fun, and I'll see you in the next one.